That was my pastor welcome, the call to worship, the confession, and parts of my sermon. I wrote those on Wednesday morning, but by Wednesday afternoon, everything needed to change. Because as you know, our nation's capital was stormed, raided, looted by pro-Trump supporters and rioters and protesters. What we do here in church, what we do as Christians, must always respond not only to God, but also to what is happening in our world. It is our duty. It's our responsibility. It is our job as Christians to engage with God and to engage with each other in what is going on in our life and our family and our city, our state, our neighborhood, our country, our entire world. And that's why after Wednesday, after the events on Wednesday, I adapted, I rewrote parts of this pastor welcome, the call to worship that we'll soon be reading, and of course the sermon, responding to what we are doing in America today, what is going on in our nation today. Many people asked me yesterday from our church and other people I know, what should we feel? What, what should we do? What, what, is, what is God doing? Is God in control? What's going on? What is the future of America? I am not going to, in this worship, tell you that everything's going to be all right and God's going to work it all out. I am more practical and realistic and more Christian than that. God is in control. Things will work out. But we are in a process right now. We are in a changing period of our nation's history right now. And if anything, if anything good comes out of what happened on Wednesday, it is that we know how angry our country is. We know what we have to work on now. I can offer this for words of assurance. It is going to be okay. It's not going to be easy. The next four years, the next 10 years will not be easy. But life with God is never easy. A life where we live our morals publicly in our ethical life. That is never an easy life. What we'll be doing in today's worship and, and, and in the sermon is we're going to be asking ourselves, as a people of God, what is our responsibility? How should we love not only the people that we agree with, but the people that we vehemently disagree with? How am I to love them? How am I to Love the people who stormed through the Capitol on Wednesday. Those are hard questions. And yet, I'm positive that things will work out. That this church and many other churches, that, that all of you watching today, are willing to work on these things. And we will work on them together. We did stick with, despite the changes that I have made to the sermon, we did stick with our original scripture passage that we had chosen, and that is the first creation story in the book of Genesis. So for today's worship, we're going to be going through um, all six days, all seven days of, of the creation story. In fact, I want to read right now 
verses 1 through 5 of that creation story. So open up your Bible, if you happen to have it with you, to Genesis, the very first page. We're going to read verses 1 through 5 right now. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. I'm going to give you a little sneak peek into what we'll be doing in today's worship and in the sermon. And it has direct connections to what happened on Wednesday, what our nation is going through right now. In the first creation story, uh, in the first mythological creation story, God is separating the elements of chaos and the universe into recognizable, orderly things. God's taking chaos and creating order. And yet, at the same time, you and I know very well that light and darkness are not simply separated and never meet. We don't go from, from uh, pitch black to noon right away. We have, we have a dawn. The sun slowly rises and we go the little, the little orange out in the east and then it gradually gets brighter. And same on the tail end of the day, the sun gradually sets. Despite all of the divisions that are in the first creation story, we know that reality mixes and mingles and merges rather than having clean separate lines. And that's what we're going to be exploring today. And just like, just like the divisions that are in this nation, we know that those divisions are false. We are not that separate. We can find a way as a nation to come together. It will not, it, it, it will not happen overnight. It will not happen overnight. But it will happen. And if we work together, we can heal this nation and go forward. So join us as we worship, as we heal ourselves, as we come before God and, and, and we look to God to be a part of that healing, to, to regenerate us. Sing with us as, as we have some really good music and, and read along as we go through the rest of the creation story. Hey kids. We are going to read a really cool story. It's actually the very, 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 very first story in the entire Bible. Some of you might already know it. So here we go. In the beginning, nothing made sense. It was chaos. The earth hadn't taken shape yet. Darkness was everywhere. But God's spirit was already there, always moving, moving, moving. God decided to set things in order. God made light and saw that it was good. God named light day and darkness night. God created the sky and separated the water from the land. Plants and trees popped out of the ground. God filled the sea with all kinds of fish, and God saw that it was good. The sun shone brightly during the day. The moon glowed gently at night. Birds burst into the sky. Bugs buzzed through the air. Worms crawled through the dirt. The fields and forests thundered under the feet of all God's animals, and God saw that it was good. God created people, male and female. I have placed my image on you. I bless you, God said. All of this creation is for you. Eat the plants, tend the animals, 
care for creation and grow and grow. God looked over all creation. It was very good. Finally, God rested. I want you to take a real close look at the picture of the animals. And, and I want you to ask yourself if you only see one kind of animal. When you look at the picture, how many animals, different kinds of animals, do you see? I'll give you a little bit of time. So kind of point them out and, and, and count them up. How many different animals do you see? Yeah, it's kind of a lot, isn't it? And are all those animals getting along? Are they mixing and mingling? Are there fish next to the dolphin? And are there brown birds with big wings and a big beak next to a smaller gray bird with a smaller beak? Yeah, there are. Even though God creates lots of different kinds of animals and lots of different kinds of people, God wants all of us to mix and to mingle and to be together, especially people. And that's our message. Even though you look different from your best friend and your best friend looks different from your teacher, and your teacher looks different than your mom or your dad, we're all different. God still loves us all the same. Let's go ahead and do a quick prayer. You say what I say. Are you ready? Here we go. Oh God, thank you for making me, me. And help me to love me and help me to love everyone who is different from me. Amen. All right, we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Good morning. Please join me in our call to worship. And God said, let there be an expanse between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the expanse and separated the water under the expanse from the water above it. And it was so, and God called the expanse sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God made everything in between, a layer of sky for rain, a layer for shooting stars, and even a layer for the northern lights. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place, and let dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land and gathered waters he called seas and God saw that it was good. And God made everything in between. Land and water are not divided, but merge and mingle in estuaries, bogs, fjords, and glaciers. And though God did not exactly say this after reading all of God's word, we can easily infer the following. God wants his people to live together, mixing and merging and mingling, like saltwater seas and freshwater rivers, like sky and sun and stars and space. We shall not be divided black and white, rich and poor, Democrat and Republican. We shall not be divided because day does not yield instantly tonight and night does not yield instantly today. They slowly merge and yield to each other. And we too, as Americans, as people of God, must mix and merge and mingle with each other. Amen.
of Scripture, starting from verse 20. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. We are, of course, living creatures. We are living creatures created by God, the same God who on day five and the first part of day six creates everything that swims in the ocean or flies in the air or walks or slithers on the land. But we, of course, are different in many ways. We are special. We are above the animal kingdom. God asks us to steward everything else in God's creation. That is our special responsibility, our special privilege, our divine task. And yet we fail. We fail to be good stewards of, of all of this. Everything around us, the air and the water and the soil and the glaciers and animal species. We also fail to be good stewards of our society, our nation, our state, our city, our neighborhood, our family, and our own heart and mind. Not all the time, of course. We succeed many times, but we also fail many times. Animals never fail. They are just animals. But us? God gave us something special. We are conscious of our own thoughts and desires and fears and joys. In this moment of silence, I ask that you examine your heart and in light of where our nation is today, to admit to God where you might have failed to be a good steward. In the name of the Father, and of his Son, and of the Holy Ghost, your sin is forever forgiven. Amen. And thanks to God. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea, and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and the, all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that ha has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food, and it was so. God saw that all he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day.
of course, I had most of a sermon already written, like I said at the beginning of worship. And yes, I will still be including parts of what I was going to say, but, but just so you know, I won't be preaching directly from an entirely written manuscript, which is what I normally do when we have video sermons. Um, but way back before COVID changed everything, I rarely spoke from exactly pre-written notes. Of course, I had a few things written down and I would run past those ideas. Um, but my sermons way back then were more extemporaneous. And today will be mostly extemporaneous as well. So here goes. This entire service is from the creation story, the, the first creation story, not the second one. And what I was going to be talking about in the sermon, and still will to some extent, is how this true myth story, and I'll say that again, how this true myth story shows us how God creates order out of chaos. Now, let me paraphrase the opening passage. The earth was a formless void, a nothing, and chaotic waters swirled all over the universe, and everything was dark until God's spirit hovered over the chaotic swirling mass and said, let there be light. And that was just the first day. Every day after that, more orderly division and separation. The sky separates the stuff down here from the stuff up there. Oceans go here, land goes there, fish in the water, birds in the air, etc., etc., etc. The main point I was going to make was we know, we easily see in everyday life that day and night are not separated with a clear line. We know that land and water are not separated perfectly like in a child's drawing. We know that some animals are both in the water and on land. We know that penguins are birds, but they don't fly. I'm getting all of this stuff that I'm sharing with you right now from a guy by the name of Austin Hartke, a Minneapolis-based transgender theologian. He writes about this, and, and of course, he's not the first person to write about this, but, but he writes about how God allows the mixing and the mingling and the merging of all of this diversity. He says there are no clear divisions between any of the things God does in this creation myth story. Night moves into dawn, moves into daylight, moves into twilight, and moves back into night. We know this when we, when we look at the world. The sea transitions into estuaries, which transition into swamps, which gradually become dry land, for instance. Or um, beavers are not fish, but they swim more gracefully than they walk. And if that's the case, then on what day were beavers created? Were they created on day five with the sea monsters? Or were they created on day six with the land animals? And that's kind of the stuff that Austin Hartke points out. And he says that God made no divisions between these animals. God made no divisions between different ecosystems um, or, or, or natural ph phenomena. And right now, as you can tell, um, this is an extemporaneous sermon, one that I did not have a lot of time to prepare because the notes that I do have are scrolling on my teleprompter. So please forgive me for those times when it might just be a little bit awkward and you can see my finger trying to get back to my, to my notes. In any case, what Austin Hartke, the transgender theologian, points out is that despite the way the first creation story is written, one in which it seems there are these clear divisions. We know that there are not clear divisions between daytime and nighttime, bet between beavers and fish and penguins, um, between 
the ocean, and then the estuary, and then the swamp, and then dry land. God made no divisions between people either. And that was going to be the main point of my original sermon, that, that contrary to conservative claims that God only makes, um, God only makes men or women, you know, contrary to a conservative Christian claim that God is, makes perfection, that, that, that God could never make a transgender person, um, and despite conservative claims um, that, um, uh, that God only makes men who love women and God only makes women who love men, Austin Hartke says that God made all types of people, gay, straight, black, white, Republican, Democrat, tall, short, skinny, and, and super duper smart and all of us just mostly average smart people. But God made us all in the image of God. So that's where I was going to end my sermon, the original sermon prior to what happened on Wednesday, prior to the armed insurrection at the Capitol. So now, where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? Where is America heading now? How do we restore order to the chaos that America has become? Well, of course, that's a complicated answer and it's way over my head and way over my pay grade. But let's remember what our sermon series is this month. We are currently in a sermon series and this today, this, this Sunday, was supposed to be the second Sunday of our sermon series, which is titled, A New Birth in You. So all month we were talking about a new birth in you. And we're looking at how God brought Jesus into our world, giving us a new birth in Christ, and how this same new birth is, is something each of us goes through constantly throughout our own life. And I believe, and this, this is now returning to how possibly America will go forward, I believe that starting Wednesday of this week, our nation is actually ready to explore a new birth. I believe that we are ready to explore a new birth where, where liberals do not see division between themselves and conservatives, for instance. Or, or that conservatives do not see division between themselves and liberals, or where Republicans and Democrats partner together. Um, maybe, maybe this new birth is where farmers do not demonize urbanites, and urbanites do not see farmers as just Trump-loving hicks. The divisions that we love to talk about, all of us, um, uh, liberals are just as bad at this as conservatives are. We all love to see these divisions between us. But they aren't really there. Just like the mushy ground of a bog, we're all in this together. And we cannot be separated. When one of us bleeds, we all bleed. So I'm not really sure exactly where I'm going to be ending my, ending my sermon right now today because this is a very complicated answer. But what I do know is that there is a path. There is a path forward. There, there is a new birth for America coming soon. We won't see this overnight. It, it, it will take a while, but together, Together we will get there. And I, just so you understand, I am not giving a pass to, uh, how do I say this? Um, I am not giving a pass to anyone who blindly supported President Trump over these last four years. But it's also not just about President Trump. America has been going down this path for at least the last 40 years, 40, 
for zero years. A path in which we demonize and divide people that we don't agree with. A period in which facts are not facts for many people. And this is a sad, dangerous part of American history. And yet I am hopeful that when people I disagree with can listen to me and people who disagree with me can hear me out as well, I know that America will start on a path to its new birth, one in which there is no division, everything just in the mushy, marshy middle, like the land between seas and fresh water. Let us pray. You know what? You know what? Actually, I just remembered. Actually, we're not going to pray. Um, I remembered that we didn't actually finish um, the creation story. I think we ended on day six. We never even got to day seven. So let's make this our prayer. Pick up your Bibles and let's go ahead and read the very end of the first true myth creation story. So open your Bible to Genesis chapter 2, and we will read 1 through 3. Here we go. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. In closing, as Americans, as Christian Americans, we are not on day seven. We're still on day six, or maybe it's day five, I'm not sure. We have a new America that we can create, and together, we will create it. Amen. Thank you.